Hey you guys, welcome to The Ranting Shop. It's me, Melissa, and I want to speak today about the Jessica and Chris situation. This has come or become such a huge situation and such a huge debacle among the Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook groups that there is a very clear divide between who supports Jessica and who supports Chris. I feel like at the end of the day, the best stance to have is one where you're looking at both people objectively and coming to a conclusion based on what is seen and what is said and possibly not said. So Jessica did an interview and even before we speak about Jessica's interview, this whole thing came to a head. Because in the previous episode of Ready to Love, we see that Chris is visibly upset, visibly crying or on the verge of tears and ready to do God knows what. Because he was, I don't want to say he was pushed to a point. What I will say is he pushed himself to a point of no return, of yelling, of shouting, of cursing this woman and because people like Chris so much, because he's so handsome and he's, oh, Chris, 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 that they were willing to look for any plausible reason as to why he went off the deep end. People were even trying to say that maybe Jessica spoke on his child. Maybe Jessica spoke on his sexuality. Well... In an interview that Jessica did with Cl- Crystal, sorry, Crystal XO, she essentially said she didn't do any of that. She essentially said she did nothing to warrant Chris's response to her. And I think it didn't suffice for people. It wasn't enough. People needed to figure out what was said. Even to the point where Cl- Crystal was... She decided to ask a straight up question. You know when Crystal like tries to ask difficult questions. She tries to beat around the bush a little bit. And like smother them with niceties. And say I know you've done really well with this. And I know you've done really well with that. But in regards to this particular act. Like she tries to. Like she never asks a straightforward question. So um. Okay so did you mention his sexuality? Is that why he. And she said no. And so people were like, okay, um, they were like, that, that wasn't enough. Like, there's no way he could get that upset for no reason, right? So Chris now does an interview with Crystal. And people are flocking towards this because they're looking for clarity. They're looking for some reason as to why he went off the deep end. Maybe Jessica didn't say it, so maybe Chris would say it, right? Chris couldn't signify one particular reason that he went off he kept repeating that it was a myriad of things oh how she treated the hairdresser oh how she treated marie oh how she treated other people but it was never anything that was directly affecting him or or anything to do with him what still from chris and and you can i'm gonna let you respond to this after chris Okay. I want to know from Chris, what did Jessica say at the elimination that caused you to be that angry and to say F her? That's what we it's want a, to know. It's a, it's, a, it's a plethora of things that, um, that but Jessica... But what are those things that she said? But she got on the same way when she was talking to you. Uh, that was a lot of stuff happened. That, that, that day was long. So okay. it was a plethora of things. The main thing was like the disrespect. Like I just felt like she just kept disrespecting me throughout the process yeah okay he spoke of the fact that oh she was nonchalant and that nonchalantness made me angry and it made him upset what jessica says and i think it was repeated was that she was like okay are you fine like when he got really mad and he he stormed off or whatever the case may be he came back to finish the scene and she was like you're okay everything is fine you're good and I think he took that as a bit of disrespect. Like, at that point, he's, lo- he's lost control, essentially. And it's put Jessica in a position 
that is somewhat superior to him because look at how she's able to control her emotions but he wasn't able to but yet still he's speaking of women not being able to be in high pressure or high powered leadership positions because they're emotional and look at how emotional he got and look at how stoic and nonchalant, nonchalant she was so if anything it was proving that it's actually chris that's the one that's unable to handle his emotion and it's actually chris that's unable to possibly be in a high powered high pressured leadership position and it's supposed to be the woman but it's him the male so i think after that happened and jessica was probably more in a control position it made him even more i suppose embarrassed and so her now telling him okay you okay you fine it's almost like adding insult to injury you know it's like making him even more aware that he had just lost his cool and jessica the woman who is supposed to be highly emotional did not so and also it contradicted his point so people i i still think people were not satisfied with the fact that she didn't do any one particular thing to chris she didn't say any one particular thing to chris at that table to warrant his response i think people still did not they were not satisfied with it but my thing about it is why are people still speculating on what she may have said or and no none of them said like jessica never admitted to disrespecting him and call bringing his child into anything she didn't call him any name and people are still on this witch hunt of jessica must have said something like you guys need to chill the point of the matter is she was too calm and too collected and he lost it and i feel like he kept bringing up other people's situations to justify why she wasn't a good person or why he fell out with her but my thing about it is no speak on yourself don't speak on the women's experiences with jessica if anything the women can speak on their own situations you speak on your situation you speak on yourself don't bring other people into your stuff you know what i'm saying and i remember i asked katarina okay so because she was saying if that was chris's experience with her then that was his experience with her nobody's arguing this okay nobody's arguing this i'm not saying he didn't see her as combative if that's what he interpreted her as that is what he interpreted her as but what i am saying is i was trying to tell jessica essentially okay was that your experience with her and essentially she never responded to that question she was like oh um that's the men's experience no i'm asking you if that was your experience because if it was the men's experience then and they're saying that wasn't their experience i mean somebody's lying if you're speaking on the men's experience and the men only chris is saying she's combative then there's some disconnect there if you never had that experience with her okay then don't speak on other people's experiences allow other people to speak on their own experiences you know what i'm saying that was essentially my point now there's a disconnect between the use of the word the men think and what the men actually thought because in the lounge or while doing the deliberation Maurier says this me and the fellas met with Tommy today. Jessica, a lot of the guys feel that you are a great friend, a great businesswoman, sometimes possibly combative. Right? After the deliberation, everybody's sitting there. The men, one by one, say they didn't say it. So it's not Phil who said it. It's not Quinton who said it. It's not Maurier who said it. It's Chris 
it was Chris. That's what Maurice said. And then Chris kept saying during his interview, no, it was a, um, Quinton said it was a um, collective decision. But my thing about it is it could very well be a collective decision, but it could be a collective decision based on what everybody said, not based on one consensus. Like, for example, you think she's smart. You think she's sexy, you think she's cool, you think she's combative. So, in the deliberation, I say, the men think you're cool, sexy, smart, and combative. That doesn't mean that all the men think you're one particular thing. Instead, each man provided their input and his job was to combine that or the producer's job was to combine everybody's talking point into one cohesive point or one cohesive feedback and that is precisely why every time a woman would come and say okay who thought i was this way the men would say not me it wasn't me because it's not everybody thinking that Everybody has their particular thought about that individual. But that does not mean that because you say combative, it means I necessarily agreed with you saying combative. What I did do is put your input into the group input. It's essentially group input. And I don't understand why people... That's what I hate about this whole show. It's like, okay, you don't like Jessica. But let's not act dumb. Let's not act slow and act as if everybody thought she was combative like stop the bs these men particularly said after the fact that that wasn't their experience and they didn't use that term none of these phil never dated um jessica to say to speak on whether she was combative or not right the same way quinta never dated her to speak on whether she's been combative. Maurier has never seen a combative side of her. So why would they all agree to the term combative? Clearly, they were simply taking everybody's one point into consideration and amalgamating it to use as feedback for her. Like, t come on, you guys. It's as simple as that. And I understand that, okay, whatever decision they come up with is what they come up with and it should be kept in the lounge. Fine. Fine, whatever. But if somebody's giving me negative feedback, I want to know who said it and I want to have a conversation with that person and I want to find out why they think that. But apparently, taking that stance is being combative. I don't see it and I don't get it. Simply wanting clarity, simply wanting understanding so that you can better get where that person came from is not combativeness. I don't care what people say. Because if somebody said something negative about me that I don't believe is true, I am going to want to know what is it that I did that make, made you come to that conclusion, period. Call me combative for it, whatever. But I'm going to want clarity about it. I think what it is is that people act self-righteously. I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't do that. I would just do this. I would just do that. Like straight BS. I am going to want to know if somebody thinks negatively of me and why they think negatively of me. Call that whatever you want. Okay, now, let's speak on Chris being a compulsive liar. Okay, we've come to the conclusion that Chris is someone who doesn't like confrontation. Fine. If you don't like confrontation, then don't say things that would create confrontation. I understand speaking your truth clearly, being able to share your thoughts clearly, that's fine. But my thing about it is, how is it that you could do it behind someone's back? 
but when confronted by the individual, you're unable to admit to it. That's what really pissed everybody off. If Chris admitted to saying that word and provided concrete reasons why he felt that way and stood on what he said, I wouldn't be upset. I wouldn't care. I would be like, okay, he said that, he stood on it, he provided you reasons as to why, let it be. But instead he decided to hide behind Maury and say, well, Maurier said the word. Nobody told Maria to say the word. Where did Maria get the word from? You! Oh, he didn't have to say that word. He knew that word was triggering to, 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 to Jessica. Granted, he knew the word was triggering to Jessica. But in my opinion, I feel as if, if that is what the men are saying, then that is what should have been conveyed. So I'm not going to put the blame on Maurie. I feel like I actually feel glad and happy that he did use those terms because that was the term that was conveyed to him to use. And I low key feel as if it was strategic for Maurier to use that word because that way it gets, it puts a highlight on Chris. Because as far as Maurier knows, Jesse, um, Chris was his competition as far as Jessica was concerned. So in order to bowl out his competition, why not say or use the term that both him and Jessica would know would have came from Chris? A term he knew would make Jessica upset. A term he knew would put that Chris competitor into the dust. You know, I think it was strategic of Maury to do. I absolutely do feel that way. So Chris is a liar. He said he didn't use the term. But he did. I'm pretty sure he was the only person that used that term. Granted, he made a good point and say, Oh, I, I could have been saying that about other people. But they made it about me saying it about her. Okay, granted. But you said it on multiple occasions. Even to the point where after the confrontation, these are probably one of the last words you said. You, when you finally broke, you told this woman, you are combative. Making it seem as if, oh, he, he finally came to that conclusion. No, you've been saying that. Let's not play anymore. You've been saying it. Just own up to it. If you don't want to be confronted about talking ish, don't say ish. That's the way I see it, you know. Um, so, Maria comes on. Maria calls him a lying-ass boy. And everything starts off extremely contentious. So, he calls Maria, prior to Maria coming up, he calls him Messy Maria. And he tries to remove himself from the word Messy Maria by saying, Oh, it's something I heard. It's something you heard, but... It's also something you're repeating. It's also something you believe to be true. So don't abs take away, don't remove yourself from the term when you're using that term and repeating that term because you believe it to be true. That's the thing about Chris that I don't like. If you're going to say something, stand on it. And it further proves that he is just a lying man that doesn't like confrontation. It's like he wants to be able to speak freely and when you clock him on it and check him on it, he doesn't want to speak on it. Now, I'm not saying Maury is a saint. I'm not saying Jessica is a saint. These are things that I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm not speaking on that. But what I am speaking on is Chris's problematic behavior. His problematic rhetoric that like nobody is clocking he has issues as far as his masculinity is concerned i feel like it's a soft spot for him i feel like he's been told before that he's not very masculine i believe that it bothers him deeply and when you question his masculinity it upsets him to no end 
And so because it is a grave insecurity of his, he doesn't want it to be challenged. Which is precisely why he wants a woman that doesn't challenge it. The issue here was simply that Jessica was going to always challenge it. Which is why their union would have never made any sense. Which is why their union would have eventually crashed and burnt. There's no need to be going back and forth with people. You don't like Jessica. You think she's mean. You think she's unlikable. You think she's... Which is fine. Everybody's allowed their opinions. But what I don't like is when people's judgment is clouded by the fact that they don't like somebody. Why can't you not like somebody and also stand up for them at the same time? Because something was badly done to them. Why can't these things be done at the same time? Why does it have to be, I don't like her, she deserves this, she deserves that. Why does it have to be that? When people view things and analyze things in, this, in that particular manner, to me, they lose all form of credibility. They, they, they lose all form of credibility because at this point, it's like you're just saying things and speaking from an emotional perspective. You're not speaking or thinking logically. Take yourself away from the fact that you don't like her. We're all arguing the point of him shouting at her. Was that warranted? That is what it should be on and that is what it should stay on. I don't want to hear anything about how she treated whoever. How did she treat you? What did she do to warrant that response from you? That's what I want to know. And he didn't give a clear response. Which makes me believe that it wasn't necessarily what she did to him. But simply because the way she responded or were, was responding to their conversation got under his skin. And further proved to the world that he's not as masculine as he wants people to see him as. Him using the term, oh, I had manly conversation. It doesn't make you manly, Chris. You, you seem more feminine to me than anything else, which is fine, which is completely fine. I think what really pissed him off is the fact that she ended up seeming more masculine than him. He's on this, oh, I'm masculine thing, and she didn't do much and seemed more masculine than he did. Which is fine. All men aren't ultra masculine. You don't present as ultra masculine. You would never present as ultra masculine. Jessica is more masculine than you are. And that's fine. That's precisely why y'all don't align. It's okay. But don't throw rocks and hide your hands. Yeah, I disagree with, oh, she lining the men up and like, who said it? Who said it? Who said it? Especially when she knew it came from Chris. But my thing about it is just own up to it. If you said it, stand on it. That's it. And um, married for 10 years, she made a really good point. I don't agree with everything she says, but she makes great points. When she said that whole unreleased footage that was released on YouTube of Lee talking to Chris about the whole situation. Essentially, Lee was telling him stand on your ish you standing on your ish will make you more attractive to me and the fact that you refuse to do it makes you unattractive to me it's not necessarily that lee was standing up for jessica it's more so lee was saying to him stand on your ish that's what i see as masculine you being unable to do that Makes me not see you as this masculine leader and protector that I want. Thus far, we're not connecting. And yeah, they look good together. But we all saw that they never connected. There was nothing ever that... 
I don't think Jessica ever looked. Sorry, I don't think Lee ever looked at him and thought, "Ooh, he's the epitome of masculinity." I think that's where the turn off happened. Cause a um, a man would stand on his word. A man would be assertive, and see how he felt and stand on it. Chris's inability to do so ruled out any form of romantic anything that Lee would ever have with Chris. And that's that. So anyways, that's my stance on any everything that happened on these YouTube streets. Jessica explains, Chris explains, and then we're able to try to fit and put things in all forms of ways. And then people trying to out Jessica about, oh, tell her about the time. Tell her about the time you you tried to get me to get Phil off. So, I don't see that. The, calling me bad or whatever, I don't see that as anything. We all know this is a game and people play it. You saying Jessica told you to do A, B, C, and D. So, and, and then, so what? Whatever. Okay? It's a game. If they don't want people to be strategizing and getting people out, they should remove the game element to the show. Period. Remove the game element and make it, the f make finding love the focus. When they do that, they remove the strategic aspect to it and there'll be more genuine connections forming. The fact that y'all make this a game thing, it's inevitable for it to, to lead to a strategic thing. Like, it is what it is. Calling somebody out on being strategic to me is whatever. So what? I don't care. This is a game. It's not for finding love. Out of almost 10 seasons, there's been three successful connections. So this is not a love finding show. This is a strategic show. So it is what it is. It doesn't sway me either way. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about what's been happening in, you, in these YouTube streets about the Jessica and Chris debacle. Tell me where you... I Actually, I don't care if you're Team Jessica or Team Chris. All I want you to tell me in the comment section is, do you think Chris's actions were right? That's all I want to hear you say. However she treated the people, the people could come here and address it themselves. Nobody needs spoke people, spokesman and spokeswoman. They could speak for their own selves. But do you think Chris's actions were correct? Do you think you got a, a, a clear, concise reason as to why Chris went off? Do you understand why he did go off? Do you feel like him going off was justified? And tell me why in the comment section. Like, subscribe, and see you guys next time. Bye-bye.